Taylor, can we start with the most important thing? Let's hear it. We understand that Zeke Elliott took you guys out for to a uh, steakhouse. He did. How is that? Did you guys like wreck? Is he now in Chapter Eleven? Uh, he probably had to take out a loan to pay for it, but it was it was a lot of fun. It was just kind of a cool gesture by him because obviously he gets a lot of press, but <clears throat> he's not the type of guy to you know make it all about him. Um, and he he loves the offensive lineman. He he always says that he should have been a lineman. Um, <laughs> so I mean we love him, and that's just that's just it's just a cool gesture by him. Uh, to do that. It was actually from the Indiana game. He, we were like, hey, if you get over 200 yards, you got to take us out to eat. And he was like, well, I'll do that. So, so another 200? Uh, it was Hyde Park. It was good. <laughs> so another 200 yard game and he's taking you again? That's what he said. When did you guys go? Huh? When did he take you? Uh, probably about two weeks ago. How much lobster mac and cheese did you crush? We did, we did get lobster mac and cheese and we got, uh, it was great. It was great. Jacoby bought the Jacoby actually bought the big seafood sampler platter, like the tower uh, appetizer. It was awesome. I assume that you set him straight on the point of him thinking that he should be an offensive lineman. No, he should. I think he should be an offensive lineman. I love him. He loves blocking. So, I mean, you guys see him kill people on blocks, but uh, no, unfortunately, he has to be a running back. So, we'll deal with it. Taylor, how much um, by this point in the year? I'm sure you guys know what you do well as an offense and you want to establish that, but how much does it help if you do have something that can keep the defense guessing, whether it's in their weekly prep getting ready for you guys or on Saturday itself, whether it might be people not knowing what Braxton may or may not do in the offense or a new formation yeah. or anything. Does having something new, does that matter, or can you just do sort of what you do best and you're fine? Um, yes and no to that question. I think – you know, it always is important to just have a little something to just catch them off guard. You know, this past week, you know, I, there was a couple of plays where I was tackle over, um, and that's just something they hadn't seen. And, you know, we actually got them in a, in a really bad situation, but we just missed some blocks or else it would have been out. Um, <clears throat> but it, <clears throat> at the same time, you know, we, we believe in what we do, and I think we're, we're good enough at what we do that we can just do our base stuff, and it'll be effective and, you know, we can just dominate based on that just because, you know, no offense to the teams we're playing, but I think man for man, we've recruited well enough here and developed our players well enough that we're just better. Have, have y'all run that tackle over this year at all? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it, but it's been in the repertoire or was it just added? Um, I mean, we, d we had it a little bit in, in camp. Um, I mean, we do have it, but it was something like that we specifically planned for this week. And do you like it? I mean, do you like doing something different like that? I mean, yeah. I mean, technically, I'm a tight end, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> got a little speed over there. But yeah, it's just you know something different for the defense. You know, I'll do whatever the coach is asking me, which that's fine. What does JT? This isn't an, uh, an analysis of Cardale. Let me say, yeah. you, what JT? What does JT bring to the table that seems to make this offense run with a better rhythm? I mean, what 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 is it? Uh, more consistency. What is it that you sense out there when you're playing? Um, I think, you know, the big thing is, is he's a legitimate threat running the ball. Um, he does, he, re he reads the read option very well. You know, he pulls it when he needs to, he gives it when he needs to. And, you know, we've, we've seen in the red zone when teams, they would just want to take away Zeke, JT scores. You know, he, he yeah. pops, I mean, I think against Rutgers, he had over 100 rushing yards or something like that. Um, and that's because people want to take away Zeke, so he's a really effective runner as well. And then, um, again, to, not to take anything away from Cardell, but he has an incredibly high football IQ. So he just he just understands football, what what to check to. Um, and then it just – the offense is just faster. Yeah. Coach I mean, Meyer said – go ahead. Yeah. It, but, like, during the game, he's telling you guys things even on the – I mean, he's making checks on the field, right? That, yeah. Or helping you guys and stuff. I mean, uh, how tough was it last week knowing he wasn't going to be there after <clears> he had gotten some things going? Taylor? I mean, I, I don't want to say it was tough because, you know, we have had a lot of success in the past with Cardell. Yeah. Um, you know, there's things that he's really good at. There's things that he struggles at. Um, we just had to take more responsibility as an offensive line uh, to make some of the some of the checks for blitzes and things of, of that nature, um, which, which is fine because, you know, we have a lot of smart guys on the offensive line. Um, but just, just a minor adjustment, really. With Fournette only – going for minimal yardage last week against Alabama and Boykin having a tough game. I don't know if you got to watch any of that Oklahoma State TCU game, but having mm -hmm. a tough game. Uh, this would seem to be a moment where Zeke 
could make a move. <laughs> yeah. In the Heisman, I, I know, you know, you guys don't talk too much about the Heisman, but it is a badge of honor even for an offensive line yeah. and stuff. Do you sense that too? That uh, it's a moment in time now for Zeke to step up. Um. And you guys to step up. Yeah, I mean, I think he's been incredibly consistent. Obviously, I think it's like 14 100 year games yeah. right now. Um, and that's with people knowing that we're that we're going to run first. Yeah. Um, so it's not. I mean, Zeke's played great. I think he's been a champion or player of the game almost every single game. Um, so for him to still have that type of production, and I think he's you know, close to seven yards a carry or something like that, um, with teams making a, making an effort to take him away primarily, um, I think he's doing a great job. And you know, this time last year, you know we through the month of uh, September, we just kept improving, improving, and you know, now it's time for us to try to compete for a championship. Um, so I think we'll get back in a rhythm. Um, you know, we have JT back this week, and you know, I just think we'll just keep improving and improving because, you know, we got some big games coming up uh, at the end of the year that we really need to perform well in. Coach Meyer said that it will be JT this week, which probably mm -hmm. not a surprise. How, yeah. how important is it to know that early in the week and have clarity of that position? I think, I mean, again, it doesn't change my job much because I'm just going to block whatever it's called. Um, but I do think it changes what the coaches will call based on, you know, what are their strengths and weaknesses. Um, we'd been kind of getting things rolling with JT. Our offense had been really productive with him, um, you know, especially at Rutgers and, you know, the week prior, uh, Penn State, when he was getting thrown in there, here and there. Um, we were really productive. So. I think that's promising for our offense because our defense has been playing great. Um, but we just need to have a, a, a complete game, and I think we're getting closer and closer to that, to, to being you know, nine units strong, as Coach Meyer would always say. And JT handled everything well last week. What, what stood out to you about the way he handled it? Um, you know, the biggest thing that you know, I appreciated of him was one that he called me personally to explain everything, um, and then the fact that he wasn't making it about himself even though it was. He was more worried about us. He was more worried about how is this going to affect the team? How is this going to affect, you know, my teammates? You know, my friends, because um, he wasn't worried about him handling it. Because he's a high character guy. Uh, so I think that was what stood out to me personally. His halftime speech. What can you share about that? Huh? His halftime speech. I mean, he, you know, he basically, you know, he wanted to be on the field with us, obviously, but he was up in the box, and it was basically they were doing exactly what we thought they were going to do. Um, we're just not executing, um, and you know the reasons for that. You know, I I do know, but I'm not going to really disclose them because uh, I watched the film. But um, that was that was basically what he said, and it was it was self-inflicted things that were tripping us up. Um, and I, I just think that was kind of cool. But even though he was out for that game, he was suspended for that game for a for a mistake that he made. People were going to still listen to him as a leader. You know, he still talked to us before the game, and, um, and I think that says a lot about him. Taylor, uh, we were talking with Billy a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and uh, he was mentioning how you guys take a lot of pride being the number one offensive line in the country, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, when you see a potential playoff matchup in a team like Alabama shut down the number one running back in the country, yardage wise, Leonard Fournette, yeah. is something you take notice of? I mean, do you kind of pay attention to what they do uh, against a team of that caliber? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that was that was probably the, you know, the game that a lot of people had circled to watch this past week. Um, huge game because they're both highly ranked teams. Um, and I mean, you see it all over ESPN, Sports Center, all that, all the stuff that you know they shut him down. But you know, I would love to play Alabama again. You know, I would love to play anybody in that top four again because I know whoever is picked in that top four is going to be a high caliber team, and they're going to be able to stop the run and they're going to have a complete defense. So, you know, whoever it may be that we play, it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be a challenge. Um, but you know, as Billy said, I do think we have the best offensive line in the country. Taylor, Billy also said that. At the beginning of the year, making adjustments, getting plays in was a little chaotic as the coaches were adjusting to mm -hmm. their new responsibilities. Yeah. How much smoother are things going now? I think they are going a lot smoother. I know, I think at the beginning of the year, Coach Warner was primarily calling all the plays from the sideline, and that's difficult for him to do. But, you know, he needs to be down on the sideline for the offensive line because he's still coaching us. Um, and it's kind of transitioned to more Coach Beck calling the plays from up in the box. Um, so it's a lot smoother. He can kind of see what's going on. Um, so I think it's just working out the kinks because there was new pieces. You know, even though there wasn't a ton of new pieces maybe on the field, you know, the coaches changed. And, 
you know, it is a new season. You know, we did have eight months or whatever it may be off from when we last played. Um, so, that, you know, there are adjustments. There are things that need to be worked out, and, um, you know, they're getting worked out, and we're, I think we're really, really close. Taylor, when you uh, are a senior and a captain like you are, you're trying to do your job every day and get ready to win the next game, but how much of your responsibility is getting the next guy ready for when you're gone? Is that, like, at the front of your mind? Is that in the back of your mind? How, how much is that a, maybe a daily or weekly part of your job? I mean, that's 100% a daily thing of mine because I think – you know, me being nominated a captain, that kind of signifies that I know how to handle my own business and I can, you know, get myself ready and I can execute uh, at a high level on the field. And that's that's going to be huge for the future. And that's going to be huge, you know, God forbid somebody go down. We need somebody to come in there and play at a high level. Um, and, you know, Jamarco's kind of been my guy that I've, I've kind of taken, uh, taken under my wing, per se, because, you know, I'm gone next year and there, there can't be a drop off. You know, there's there's a level of expectation and there's a culture in that offensive line room that needs to remain consistent regardless of who's playing what position. Um, so that's that's huge for me. I I watch every rep he does. You know, the little little thing he messes up, I'm gonna tell him. Uh, you know, not to be mean or anything about it, but I want him to be just as good, if not better, than I than I am. So, I mean, that's that's a huge responsibility, not only as a captain of the team, but kind of the the older guy in that room. You told us a few weeks ago that, uh, maybe a few weeks ago, that uh, Jamarco and Evan Lau were the only guys that were ready to step in as a, in a depth role mm -hmm. uh, when you guys were to go down. Is that still the case? I mean, do you think the other guys have come along over time? or? I mean, do I think they can? Yes. Um, but, you know, Jamarco would be, you know, the number one guy that would probably go in and we'd have to flip people around. And, you know, again, I hope nobody gets injured, but if another guy, it'd probably be Evan Lau. Now, outside of that, I don't think that um, a lot of guys are – necessarily ready it's not that they don't have the talent or the ability they're just they're just not there yet they just need more development they need a better understanding of the offense and they just need to show it in practice I mean that's that's our huge thing there's there's no such thing as a gamer you don't just go in the game and ball out it's you're, you're a practicer you practice good and then you play good um, so once they show it in practice I mean I'll have faith in them going in the game